Are your CPU temperatures too high? Are you building a brand new gaming PC and looking for the best value components? Are you planning to escape the heat by attaching two liquid coolers under each armpit? Well, stay tuned. In this video, I might have just the recommendation for you. I'm Jacob Ridley, hardware guy at PC Gamer, and I've spent the past few weeks testing liquid coolers of all shapes, sizes, and screens. Yep, there are an abundance of screens on liquid coolers these days, including some tested for this video. Big screens, little screens, IPS screens, and even screens with their own CPU and RAM. But do these attention-grabbing high-end coolers really justify their inflated price tags? Do they outperform the more affordable competition on the market? Well, I've tested a bunch of them, and I'm here to share my findings. In this video, I'll also show you two liquid coolers that are great and actually affordable. So, let's get into it. All of the coolers in this video were tested with an Intel Core i7-14700K. It's a demanding test platform, especially as it's an open test bench with no fans. But that's useful because it means I can see how these liquid coolers perform in pretty much the worst case scenario. And you can expect better results. AMD's Ryzen processors run with lower power consumption and therefore generate less waste heat, as do Intel's latest chips. Therefore, your cooler doesn't usually need to work quite as hard. I tested all of these coolers with the CPU limited to 120 watts and all passed with flying colors. There is a degree of variance to testing temperatures, ambient temps, which I've recorded, and the potential for the CPU to occasionally spike outside of normal ranges. But I've tried to keep that all to a minimum as best I can with repeat runs and retests. Let's start with the Trikes Panorama ARGB360. We can't get enough of this cooler for one big reason. That's the curved 6.67 inch AMOLED screen slapped on the pump. It's ridiculous, as is the price tag on this thing, $340 or £330. We've used the Panorama in a couple of recent builds, including one featured in the PC Gaming Show. Fun story, I had to build that at the end of a long day in a hot London studio surrounded by creative professionals, which was made a little better by the fact this cooler only requires two basic cables to get it set up. Corsair IQ, eat your heart out. Though you do have to be sure you can orient it in the way it's intended, as it doesn't allow for any meaningful adjustments. As it's built on an Acertech platform, like many others, the Trix offers performance in line with many of the top liquid coolers. However, it is within a degree or two of two custom pumped coolers, the Cooler Master Master Liquid 360 Core 2 and NZXT Kraken Elite 360 RGB. There is a cheaper version of the Panorama now, the SE, but while there's no escaping a reasonably big price tag for a big screen, you could go even bigger. The Think Q60 from Height is sure to turn a lot of heads, for both good and bad reasons, but we'll get to that. It's liquid cooler with what is effectively an entire phone attached to the pump unit. It actually has its own CPU, RAM, and storage, all under that big old 5 inch screen. A CPU cooler with its own CPU. Set me free. Anyways, is it too much? You can be the judge of that. I've built a handful of gaming PCs with this cooler, and sure, it's a talking point, but were these PCs any better for its use? This cooler struggles to keep a high-end Core i7 or Core i9 CPU at a respectable temperature during intensive testing. It's also very loud at full whack. I've tried using this on my own Core i9-14900K for a short while before getting very, very annoyed with how loud it is and how it ramps up. up and down and up and down. Oh. Height now limits the fans to 65% in the Nexus app to keep it quiet. That's the thing with the thick Q60. It is very thick, but not very long. It's technically only a 240mm radiator, and while stocky, it's naturally worse than a 360mm AIO. Height is working on one of those, but for now, this is your only option, and an expensive one at $250, £210. I built a whole PC using Corsair IQ Link components, hoping to strip back cable mess, get easy customization, and simple system monitoring. I was a little frustrated by the end of the build, but once together, I can see the benefits. But that's the thing, unless you're building an entire IQ Link gaming PC, the Titan 360 RX LCD makes very little sense. Once again, there's a screen. It's only little compared to the tricks and height, but it shows handy stats from your computer or can be set up to display GIFs or images. Try not to do anything weird, yeah? 
Unlike the simple tricks, you will need to sort many cables, connectors, and even hubs to get the Titan up and running. It's a lot of hassle for what is just essentially a liquid cooler, um, and I wouldn't recommend it without buying an entire IQ ecosystem. It does perform well, however. Corsair makes the pump inside the Titan itself, and it is very, very quiet. It's pretty average for cooling performance otherwise, but your $220 or £260 is mostly going on that screen, and all the IQ bits in the box. NZXT has put together an exceptionally stylish liquid cooler in the Kraken Elite. I dare say it's the best looking of the lot. That's a 2.72 inch IPS unit with a 60 Hz refresh rate stuck on the pump. Overkill for a cooler? Well, yeah, of course. But then it's definitely up there for looks. It's sharp, clear, and bright. One of the best features here is how NZXT cleverly stuffs the cables on the radiator to keep the pump unit looking impossibly clean. Well, kind of, not really right now. It also has an extra long 420 millimeter tube length, which is really handy for awkward sized cases like my test bench. And well, right here. The company has gone its own way with its pump design. It's called Turbine, and importantly, it performs well in gaming tests, but it's also a relatively quiet cooler at full whack. The downside to the NZXT is that it didn't get down to idle temperatures very quickly following an intensive test run. It's also mega expensive, like Cloverfield Monster expensive. It's $320 or £280. Finally, we're into liquid coolers without screens now, and in my opinion, all the better for it. The Cooler Master Master Liquid 360 Core 2 is a bit of a mouthful, but it's a mighty liquid cooler. It reliably outperforms others included in this test across games and CPU intensive benchmarks. For its performance, you might expect a huge price tag, but actually that's not the case at all. It costs $100 or £95. I've even seen it on sale for less than this, and you can buy smaller versions and save a little cash that way. This isn't the loudest cooler on the market by any means, and Cooler Master's G9R pump works splendidly. It's not the prettiest, but it looks the part, and it comes with an infinity mirror effect on the pump and RGB fans. You can also hide the cable mess with daisy-chained cables. This affordable AIO is proof that we really have hit a ceiling for cooler performance. The Master Liquid is superb value, and that's because it's not fighting for the best screen or the quietest pump. If you don't care for all that, you can get everything you need right here. Personally, I really rate this one. It was a surprise hit from my testing. The Nautilus 360RS is a Corsair cooler stripped back to the basics. It's honestly better for it versus the pricier Titan. There's no support for IQ Link, and the cables are back to normal. But for many of us looking for an easy upgrade, the Nautilus is a better fit. But is it worth it next to the Master Liquid? Well, the Nautilus performed very well in testing, even beating the Titan in a few tests by a degree or two. That's well within the variance for cooler testing, but it just goes to show that the cheaper model isn't necessarily leagues away from the top tier one. The Nautilus also kept noise to a relatively low level, and the pump isn't particularly loud either. Though one bugbear I have with the Nautilus is that despite being able to remove the pump unit cover, you can't actually rotate it to get the Corsair logo the right side up, and it's upside down right now. It's also a touch more expensive than the Master Liquid, and the superb Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 Pro we'll get onto next. Ultimately, that's what it comes down to here. You can pay less for similar, if not better, performance. For over a year now, we've recommended the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 as the best liquid cooler. This is the newer Pro model, which is a bit of a deceptive name. It sounds like it's new, improved, and more expensive than the previous model, whereas it's actually new, improved, and the same price, around $94, 80 pounds, give or take. There have been some small changes to the Pro model, better RPM control for the pump, and increased fin density. However, the biggest is the switch to P12 Pro fans, which are much faster than their predecessors. I actually tested these fans separately, and they're superb. They have a massive static pressure rating, great airflow, and they're pretty quiet at low RPMs. If it wasn't for Noctua's G2 fans, they might have been the best around. They're certainly the best for use on a radiator, which is exactly where you'll find them on the Liquid Freezer 3 Pro. All that culminates in a cooler that's right up there for performance. The addition of a contact frame for Intel builds and a quiet fan mounted into the pump for keeping your VRM cool also sweeten the deal. Though I will say the installation process on Intel chips is a little more precarious than most for the inclusion of that frame.
To wrap things up, after testing the lot, I have to say there are two standout liquid coolers. The first is the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 Pro, which only improves on the already excellent model that came before, and for value for money, it doesn't get much better than that. But there is one cooler that gets close to Arctic's, if not beating it on a good day, that's Cooler Master's Master Liquid Core 2. I've seen this thing go on sale in the US for the ridiculously low price of just $90. That's one of the best performing 360mm liquid coolers for less than half or even a third of the price of some others I've mentioned in this video. So Arctic or Cooler Master get my vote. Turns out I just don't massively care for the whole screen on a cooler thing most of the time. You can find links to all the coolers featured in this video down below and if you found this video helpful remember to subscribe to us at PC Gamer for more on the latest PC hardware. We also have tons of reviews, performance tests, and buying guides over on our site, pcgamer.com. Right, stay frosty. I'll see you next time.